Bulls, Saracens, and Champions Cup round number one, folks. It finishes 27-16. I just watched this game here in NZ this morning. Overall impressions, the Bulls came out of the game firing. Uh, they'll be disappointed they didn't push on for a bonus point, but will certainly take a win over a big side like Saracens. Saracens, on the other side, uh, started the game poorly, finished the game pretty well. Will be maybe disappointed, with obviously, with their start, but also the fact they couldn't push back for a losing bonus point. But we'll go through some key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. The Bulls started really well. I mean, they got themselves on the board within three minutes. Creel uh, is able to finish off a move. Moody with a line break. LaRue had a touch. Hans had a touch. Like, the hands from the Bulls, quick ball was phenomenal. Great play, 7-0. But a bad habit of the Bulls side was to concede points after scoring or struggling with restarts. So from the restart, they concede a soft penalty to make it 7-3. So their 7-point lead is reduced to 4. But they were playing with absolute confidence. Like LaRue at one point takes the ball right next to the sideline, manages to keep it in, gives it to a returning uh, to support uh, Moody, Moody gets a big old line break that gets some good, some, uh, some good field position. He ends up with a knock on, but the knock on leads to a penalty at scrum time. So 10-3, the Bulls extend their lead, and they were looking to play with absolute confidence. Like, is this the Bulls or is this my Blues side from 2003 or something, my like Carlos Spencer Blues days? Uh, because man, they just wanted to play everything. Like from the restart, the Bulls opted not to exit the thing with a kick. They ran the bloody thing, which was you know. Great. Do that. I love it. I mean, when you got a weapon like Kurt Lee Aronson, why not make the most of him? And they did. They looked like they'd scored. Basically a coast-to-coast -coast try, but they ruled that the initial pass, I think it was from Creel to Kurt Lee Aronson, to set up the initial break wide in their own 22, was ever so slightly forward. So chalked off, and in the scheme of not getting a bonus point, that will burn a bit extra. Game did get a little bit scrappy. The Bulls conceded a penalty at mall time. Saracens in the line out, throw not straight, and then they concede a penalty to the breakdown, which uh, the Bulls guys slot, so 13-3. But in the kind of frustrating fashion, the Bulls conceded points straight after scoring, so Lubuko low with a penalty at the breakdown conceded, so 13-6. Itoje concedes a penalty at the line out time. Husson's kick goes wide, so it was like tit for tat. Penalties conceded and shots at goal. And then Saracens concede. A yellow card, the first of four cards in this game. Alex Good off the ball uh, when the Bulls were trying to chase a kick through. Uh, cynical play, so he's off for 10. But Saracens don't have really too much trouble during the yellow card. Like they win a scrum penalty during the yellow card. Farrell has a chance to go for a drop goal in the yellow card, which misses. But the yellow card finishes with no real damage done. So that's pleasing. But what's not pleasing is as soon as you finish the yellow card period, go back to 15, they get another yellow card because... It's a bunch of pressure. Itoje gets yellow carded for um, for conceding a cynical penalty at the breakdown. And the Bulls this time are able to punish. They go for the tap. Uh, Swanee pulls the man able to finish it off after a handful of phases. So Burrows over from close range. So 20 points to 6 at halftime. The Bulls have been pretty good value for their lead. They've had 59% position. They've had 64% territory. They've had 320 run meters to 99. They've beaten 19 defenders to 1 and have 5 clean breaks to zip. If anything, they'll be disappointed. They didn't have more than 2 tries. They did have the 1 denied. Second half, uh, again with the Bulls and their frustrating restarts, Elric Lowe with an extra roll uh, as he's being tackled, so concedes a penalty. Saracen's off the touch. Farrell kicks the bloody thing dead, so not the greatest way of trying to get some momentum uh, back into the game. And then the Bulls score another worldie of a try on kick return, but it's another one that is chalked off for that initial pass, kind of when they set themselves up to go wide, being forward. So, yeah, that's two bloody nice tries that the Bulls had chalked off. But... The third time, I guess, uh, for scoring kind of a wee bit of a worldie could not be chalked off. 47 minutes. I wrote, surely this time it can't be TMO'd. Uh, Saracens with the dink through. But I think it's LaRue calmly gives it to Kurt Lee who gets a big old line break. Uh, you know, just cuts through. I think it's Jamie George and was it uh, Tompkins. But man, he makes those defenders look like they're stuck in the mud. Uh, around the Saracens defenders, they get it to Moody. Who's got the gas to put the hammer down? He does get ankle tapped by Farrell, but he's able to get back up because he's not held. And um, yeah, goes over for the try. So 27 points to six. It's looking like game over for the Saracens boys, but frustrating for the Bulls. That's the final scoring, and you've still got more than half an hour to play. So yeah, weird thing with the conversion with that one is the shot clock went dead. 
but they still allowed Husun to take the clock. I don't know if the clock on the screen is the same one as the officials are using. Sometimes we have that issue with the match clock, right? The match clock we see is not the one the officials are using, so I don't know. But it looked like the clock was like five seconds over, but they still let him take it. But anyway, so uh, yeah, 27-6, but that's the final score. It looks like it's going to get worse for Saracen as well, because Billy V gets red carded for a pretty careless clean out, where he comes into the thing at a million miles an hour from a huge distance, and just hits one of the Bulls guys in the head. It didn't look like the most direct of blows in terms of like in a proper whiplash effect, but he still hit him pretty, pretty badly, so... Red card, I mean, the ref was asking, is it glancing or is it direct? And TMO said, you know, no, it's, it's direct enough that it's highly dangerous. So he gets red carded. But that seems to galvanize the Saracens guys, eh? So they go at last through 11 phases. You've got Farrell, good to daily, like three of the Saracens veterans. Makes it, uh, you know, 27 points to 11. Missed conversion. And, um, yeah, when Saracens get a couple of penalties, they're able to get themselves some good field position. They did do a bit of a let off because they had obstruction at line out time, which meant they weren't kind of able to capitalize on that momentum. But they did manage to get the Bulls yellow carded because, I mean, they just put too much pressure on. And it's the kind of reverse of the first half where it's just that pressure building. So warning, then Swanee Pole, the try scorer, concedes a penalty at line out time. So he gets carded. Saracens 14 or 14, they punish. McFarland, he's a pretty athletic customer off the bench, able to reach up as he goes close to the line. So 27-16 with the conversion off the post. That is the final scoring. The Bulls went through 10 phases of the death to chase the bonus point, but couldn't quite get it done. Theo Dam with the turnovers. Harrison's kept playing, went up the other end of the field, but also ended up knocking it on. So yeah, man, proper game of two halves. I mean, remember the possession territory stats from the first half was all the Bulls. The game finishes 46 54 position for Saracens and territory finishes 50 50. So the Bulls only had 36% position in the second half and 39% territory. So Saracens really did come back well despite the red card. Run meters finished 558 to 323. Defenders beaten 32 13. Saracens won't be happy with the tackling, man. It finished at 71%, which is really poor. Uh, the Bulls were a much more respectable 87%. Clean breaks 7 zip. So sharp from the Bulls, man. They're guys like Moody and Aronser and LaRue setting them up. Hans as well. I mean, turnovers one though. That's where Saracens maybe keep the game a bit more even. So 11 to the Bulls three. Penalties conceded 14-13. Both sides would like to be a touch lower in that regard. Individuals. I mean, Kirtley Aronser, 108 meters. Seven defenders beaten. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a pretty dangerous customer. Kane and Moody, 93 meters. Four defenders beaten. Cinti had 70 meters. Uh, top tackler of the game was Juan Martin Gonzalez with 14. So, um, yeah, pretty crazy game. The Bulls seemingly flying the flag for the URC because some of the URC teams have been a little bit disappointed this Champions Cup weekend, but I certainly haven't seen all the games, so I won't comment on any of them. But, um, yeah, you guys, there's no thoughts on the game. The Bulls next are away to Lyon, so trip to France for them. Saracens are back home to face Connacht. So, um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on the match, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.